Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is James and welcome back to The Soundline. So today what I'm going to be talking to you guys about is by wiring and by amping and about the differences between the two different configurations and ways you can do them and how also they differ from your standard uh, wiring techniques you know the what the standard way you wire a speaker to an amplifier how that differs from a by wiring setup and a by amping setup and also I kind of want to just talk a little bit about um, maybe some of the myths or theories around them uh, explain what which of them are correct and which aren't correct and just you know really if you're if you're interested in by wiring or by amping I want to make sure that you guys are understanding it correctly so the naming of by wiring and by amping is actually very self-explanatory in a standard wiring setup you have your amplifier channel say your left or your right channel and you run your speaker wire straight from that to the input of the speaker positive to positive negative to negative that's your standard input and that's how most people run their speakers. Um, by wiring is exactly what it sounds like. It's by, meaning two, wiring. So, you know, two lots of wire. You have the same amount of amplifiers, one amplifier, one speaker, but two lots of wire. And I'll explain more in the reasoning you do this and show you what it looks like a little bit later on. But for now, I'll just explain like kind of the terminology of it. And then by amping, you've got obviously exactly what that sounds like. By, meaning two, amping two amps so you would run two amplifiers to one speaker with the required number of speaker cables so I'm going to talk a little bit about the speaker wires I've got here behind me this is all Kimber cable by the way I will drop a link to their website in the description so you can check it out if you want but there are lots of uh, speaker cable manufacturers out there many of them very high quality you don't have to use Kimber cable but it's what we use so Kimber cable when it comes off the roll like this if you want to buy it by the meter they've got a few different configurations of um, coating and materials and strand thickness and that sort of thing. I'm not going to talk about that today, I will make another video talking more about Kimber Cable and its, yeah, it's uh, manufacturing style and why it's so good another day, but for now I'm just going to talk about the different quantities of strands. So we have 4, 8 and 12 strand um, amounts and I'll, I'll give you a bit of a close up of them now. So looking in the TC range here, TC by the way just stands for Teflon coating, which is what these have on them. So you see we've got 4 TC which has got four positives and four negatives woven in. 8TC, which has eight positives and eight negatives all woven together. And then 12TC, you're probably, you're probably getting it by now. 12 positives and 12 negatives all woven together. I'll talk a little bit more about 12TC later on because there's actually something kind of different you can do with it that compared to four and 8TC. But I'm gonna show you what you can do with the different uh, types and setups. So 4TC is kind of like our standard speaker wire your four positives and four negatives. So when we use 4TC, we typically use it for standard speaker wiring. So you'll see it breaks out from the woven section here to two, a positive and a negative. And that's kind of standard with four. Technically you could do by wiring or by amping with 4TC, but it would leave you with only two cores per uh, speaker terminal, which is really probably not that much current flowing through so we probably wouldn't do that we would go up to an eight for that and i'll show that next so that's what you would do with four you would basically do your standard wiring moving up to eight now this is eight pr which is just a different coating instead of the white and silver stuff it's uh red and black which is just a different type of coating but you'll see what we have at this end is we have two so that would go into our amplifier and then what we're able to do at this end is actually have four so you can see we've actually got two blacks and two reds and this is a by wiring setup so the amplifier end has your standard output and then it goes to four here now in case you're unaware what those plugs would plug into because i realize now that i've may have skipped over this section um most speakers when we're looking at a floor standing speaker like this these are the monitor audio platinum 200s by the way most floor standing speakers and even a lot of bookshelf speakers if you look down at their terminal connections, we'll have four set, four connectors. We can unplug these so that you can see. So you can see here that we have the four terminals. Two of them have the red cap and two of them have the black cap. Now, black will always, almost always, 
be on a speaker negative and red quite likely will be your positive and you can verify that by looking in real close here see these these speakers have a little negative and positive and now you also notice that they have little writing in between them so you can see just you can see just in there that says hf and down there says lf and what that stands for is high frequency and low frequency so floor standing speakers like this are going to have dedicated different woofers to do different frequencies so the lf or low frequency is going to directly connect to these two bass woofers here and then the hf the high frequency will connect to our mid-range and our tweeter for the higher frequencies what you'll notice down here on the back of these speakers is that we have these little wires bridging the two negatives and the two positives so if you're by wiring or by amping what you want to do is you take these little bridges out because what that allows you to do is have separate inputs for your low frequency and your high frequency. So what I think I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you guys a few configurations on this amplifier and speaker setup here and basically explain the advantages and maybe disadvantages if there are any to that kind of configuration. So this kind of configuration that we have going on here is the most basic standard way of wiring up a speaker. All of you know how to do it, it's just one wire for the negative, one wire for the positive on those on that channel there, which is the left, uh, sorry, the right channel, which go to the input in the back here. It doesn't matter where you put these, you can put them cross diagonal like that if you want, you can put them up the top. It doesn't matter because the top and bottom is linked with these bridges. Now that is the disadvantage with the setup. You have to go through these little loops here to connect the high and low frequencies. Different brands of speaker are going to have different qualities of bridges. For instance, that's what the Monitor Audio uh, Platinum ones look like. Here are some by Sonus Faber, which is a really nice Italian company. If I can get that to focus. You see there, there's just little bits of blades of metal like that. Now these, as gorgeous as Sonus Faber's are, those little blades of metal are probably the weakest link in their whole system. Not strength wise, I mean like sound quality wise. But if you can, you want to avoid running your signal path, especially for your treble, through those little blades because they just deteriorate sound quality so much. Monitor Audio have a silver, uh, sorry, a similar style. You can see they've got these little gold blade joiners here. Now to give an example of how, how it can make it sound better, if you guys remember a video that I did not too long ago where we had the Sonus Faber Il Criminese, Il Criminese, whatever you want to call them, speakers uh, here at Soundland when we were doing our audio research event, we found that it was an incredible difference in sound quality, an increase in sound quality, by removing those little gold blades and simply putting some, just some basic speaker wire, like some Kimber 4T, uh, 4TC speaker wire from here to here. So just speaker wire itself sounded better than a blade piece of metal. And you'll probably notice that on the Platinum series here, Monitor Audio decided to use a piece of thick, uh, I'd say 14 gauge wire, instead of um, blades or instead of flat pieces of metal. And that's a good quality increase, but it's still not going to be as good a quality as by wiring. Which is what I'm going to show you next. So now this setup here is a by wiring setup. So you'll see we have one set of speaker wires coming out the channel of this amplifier here, just the black and the red coming down through the speaker wires and then when it gets to the speaker it separates out into four, two blacks and two reds. Now what this does is it means that the high frequencies and the low frequencies are both still connected with the equal amounts of cable and current to the output of the amplifier but it means you don't have to go through these little blades or wires that have to jump the two and that makes a dramatic increase in sound quality and that is a by wiring setup now i imagine some of you are probably thinking why does this amp have eight speaker ter uh, terminals i've seen my my amp has eight speaker terminals what's the difference there what does it mean speakers a and b what does it mean so i'll explain that so the reason they do that on this particular amp here we have eight speaker wires so that we can do this so what I've done now is I'm using the bottom speaker terminals and the top speaker terminals running over to the amp here. So the reason that they do the, the A and the B run of the speaker terminals is so that you can use really expensive speaker cables like these 
these pre-made Kimber Select range of speaker cables that come with the terminals and everything um, on them already. Obviously we can't simply just have one speaker wire and then split it off manually into four wires out here. So the idea with this is that you can have by wiring, this is still a by wiring setup with more high end pre-made speaker wires. So you've simply got A and B. Now there is no difference between connecting a wire here and here. If I wanted, I could actually just shove this wire in with that one, but it doesn't look as tidy and doesn't fit as nice. This pin and this pin here are straight bridged. There is no nothing between them. There's no difference in amplification. It's the exact same piece of copper and same goes for here and here and here. It's just double connectors on one amplifier. That there is an ideal bi-wiring speaker setup where you've got two lots of speaker wire runs going to your speaker from both outputs of your amplifier. And then you would do that to both of your speakers. But what if your amplifier is like this? Where it has speaker off A, B and A, B. A, B and A plus B. So that amplifier there has the same eight terminals on the back of it, but it has a selector on the front to choose whether you want to play sound out of A, B or A and B at the same time. This amplifier here does not have that. It is a power amplifier only, it has barely any controls on it and the pins are just bridged. On that one, as I was saying, you can choose what one it comes out of. Now, what that may allow you to do is have two different sets of speakers. You may want to have some monitor audio ones and some Sonos Faber speakers side by side in case you prefer listening to one set of speakers for a particular genre of music or artist. I don't know many people who do that because it means you have to have twice as many speakers when you're only ever using one. You could still use it for by wiring. We use, like here, we use all the speaker terminals, two lots of speaker wires going from the amplifier to the speakers. If you were doing that, you would just have it set to A plus B and then it would essentially become the same configuration as this power amplifier here. But what you would find if you had, like say, only A speaker output turned on and you had it wired up in this way, you would only have just the tweeters in mid-range going or just the bass, depending on what you hooked it to. So if you were going to do a bi wiring setup like this with one of those amplifiers as an A or B or A plus B selector, you would definitely want it to be on A plus B, otherwise you'll only get the bass or the treble playing. So that's a couple of configurations of bi wiring. Um, I, be I believe I went over the advantages of it. Obviously it means you don't have to listen to the horrible sound that those little jumper leads uh, have. Even though you can spend, you know, 20, 40, 80 grand on a speaker, the little jumpers that come with them are still the exact same across the board. The Sonus Faber Il Crimines that we listened to were $85,000 speakers and the little blade terminals that came with them were the same as what come on their Principa range which started about a grand. So it is worth like bypassing those if you can, even if doing what we did which was simply replace those little blades with a little wire jumper by a decent speaker brand company. You know, like we cut a little piece of 4TC, jumped it and it sounded the world world of difference. Comparing that, where you have just a better jumper, to something like this, obviously with this type of scenario where you have a, two lots of better speaker wire, you're going to get a lot more potential current. Our current's going to flow a lot easier through two thick speaker wires like this than through one of them, which means that the amp doesn't have to work as hard, it doesn't get as hot, and ultimately each you know speaker wire is going to do a better job. Realistically, you can never have too much speaker wire. So that's by wiring. Now, by amping, by amping would be something more along the lines of this. We have two amplifiers, either the same or different. Preferably the same, but you could use a different amplifier if you wanted to, if you wire it up correctly. But what we have here, rather than using the one amp, obviously we're using two amps now, we have, in this configuration, we have the wires for the bass or the low frequency running to the big amp and the wires for the treble or the high frequency running to the little amp so that we get a bit more power going to our bass woofers, maybe increase that range a little bit. The treble doesn't need quite as much current so you can use a smaller amp and this is by amping so we're using two different amps to power one speaker. Now these are stereo amps so this one would power the bass woofers on both speakers and this one would power the treble on both speakers. What that means is that you would have to have signal leads going from your preamplifier section for the left channel and right channel going to both of these, which 
probably isn't a problem. Most decent preamplifiers will have dual main outputs. I know our one does, so that we could have, you know, XLR outputs running into this one, left and right, and same for this one, left and right, or single-ended if that's all your amp uses. So that's one way you can do by amping. What that does mean is that you're able to tinker and play with the amount of power that your different ranges of speakers get. As I say, an example is that you can give a bit more power to your bass speakers or, and a little bit less to your treble, or maybe you want to have a better amp on your treble but the same amount of power. Maybe you want something that's the same amount of power but you know a little bit more clarity, a bit higher quality to increase the, the clarity of your treble. So that's a way you can do by amping with stereo amps. The other way you can do it is with monoblock amplifiers. Which is the more common way of doing by amping. What it means is you have two of, now this is where they do have to be the same amplifier. You have a left monoblock and a right monoblock. And each one of those monoblocks powers one speaker, shown in this picture here. So here we're using two Audio Research Ref 160M monoblock amplifiers to power each uh, to pow uh, each powering one Sonus Faber Il Criminis. But that's just standard wiring. You could still do by wiring with these. Technically, with this kind of combination, you could do by wiring and by amping, because we're using two amps to power two speakers, and each amp could potentially be by wired, which would be like an ultimate setup. The penultimate setup, i.e., the simply the best you could possibly do, would be have four amplifiers. You could have one amp for the bass on your left, one amp for the treble on your left, and vice versa for the right. One amp for the bass, one amp for the treble. Quad amplifiers, four of them, each powering one section of speaker. So that's that's a little bit of an insight into by amping. Now I did mention earlier with uh, Kimber Cable 12TC there is something kind of special you can do with it. You, sorry, you can buy wire with 12TC by dividing it into six strands of wire per polarity. So you'd have six positives for the bass, six positives for the treble, six negatives, six negatives. But because it's 12, 12 can be divided by three, which means you could technically do tri-wiring. This would only be applicable to speakers that have dedicated inputs on the back of them for tri-wiring, where you would have a dedicated input for bass, mid-range, and treble. More often than not, in most speakers, the mid-range and treble are grouped together to, to be called the high frequency. But some speakers do have dedicated inputs where you have a bass, middle, and treble, or a low frequency, mid frequency, and high frequency. So you could do that with 12TC. I also should have mentioned before when I was talking about doing by wiring with that expensive Kimber cable, you know, the, the thick stuff that's pre-made up with terminals already on it and you can't cut it and splice it open and things like that. It is, doesn't necessarily mean if you want to do by wiring with that kind of cable that you have to have an amplifier that has four outputs, uh, sorry, that has dual A and B speaker outputs, because what you can actually get is something like this. So this is from Kimber's old Monocle XL range. You notice this is their standard where you've got, you know, the thick speaker cable with all of its wiring and shielding and stuff like that, and a positive and negative output. They do a version like this, which has dedicated four outputs and actually even says high, high, low, low on it. So at this end of the speaker wire, this is where the amp would be, and you would have just two sticking out. So you could have just, you know, a positive and negative for your amplifier, and then at this end, a dedicated high and low output. This is one more thing that I thought I'd mention. You know, you, you don't have to be limited to doing standard wiring if you've got an amp that only has that kind of output. And obviously, if you've got an amp that only has, you know, two speaker outputs, uh, sorry, left and right, no A and B or anything like that, you can still do it with things like 12TC and 8TC, which is able to be spliced open and split into multiple different outputs. So before I go, I'm just going to go over all of the configurations one more time in case I accidentally didn't show one of them very well earlier, just to make sure you guys got the full picture. I'm going to show all the configurations from most simple to most complex. So this is standard speaker wiring where you have just a negative and a positive coming out of your amplifier, going to the negative and the positive of your speaker, and then the high frequencies are bridged either with a little cable jumper or with a blade jumper, standard. And as I mentioned earlier, it wouldn't matter if I had this plugged in down here or that plugged in down here, both of them down on the bottom rail, because this, these connectors here and these are exactly the same. They're connected internally. So that's standard wiring. 
This is by wiring. So you have just two connections down here, negative and positive. Again, it doesn't matter what rail I have these connected to. They come down here and they split into four connections where you have two negatives, two positives, and you take the jumpers out. And that's by wiring. This is standard wiring, but with non-customizable pre-made fixed length expensive speaker cables. We have one set of outputs coming from the speaker terminals and then one input here, set of inputs going to the speaker terminals here, again with the bridging wires put in. So that's just standard. And then again with fixed length pre-made speaker wires, this is by wiring where we use both of the speaker outputs on the back of the amplifier, A and B, to individually run to the inputs on the back of the speaker, low frequency and high frequency. Again, it doesn't matter what way I put this as long as red always goes to red and black always goes to black because internally, these, this one here and this one here are connected on the inside. Same goes for these two. That's pre-made speaker wire by wired. If you were doing a by amping setup, you would have two amplifiers. One amplifier could power both the high and low frequencies in the speaker with just one speaker cable coming from the negative and the positive or you could make it even better by by wiring from one amplifier so you see here if this was a mono block amplifier we would have the negative and positive going to one speaker wire for the lows and the negative and positive speaker wire going to one negative and positive speaker outputs going to one of the wires for the high frequencies and then you would have that whole setup again for the other speaker and that would be by amped by wired or alternatively you could do stereo by amped where you have a dedicated lows amp where you power the lows off a speaker wire going to this amp and a dedicated highs amp where the speaker wire coming from here goes to the highs so both of these amps would still power left and right speakers except this one would be dedicated to the mid-range and the tweeter and this one would be dedicated to just the bass woofers I hope that has all made sense guys, I hope I have explained everything clearly, if something, if I didn't quite explain something right or I missed over something and you didn't understand, please feel free just to drop a comment and I'll do my best to type up an answer that explains it a bit clearer. And I hope I have helped shed some light on exactly what bi amping is and what bi wiring is and how it makes a difference in the stereo hi-fi setup. So that's it from me today guys, I hope you've all enjoyed this video, give, the, give it a like if you thought it was good, um, remember to check out uh, the Soundline Audio Facebook page, the link for that is in the description, as well as the link for our shop website where you can see everything that we sell and what we do. So thank you guys for watching this video, choose to be happy, and I'll catch you in the next video. Kakatiano.